The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. I'm Danny Dare, the private eye, and here's a clue you'll like. To find the mildest, richest smoke, just ask for Lucky Strike. Shopping days are left to pick a gift for every friend. So stock up now on Lucky Strike, that milder, richer blend. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky strike today. Friends, if you want all the enjoyment a cigarette can give, light up a Lucky. With every puff, you'll enjoy perfect mildness and rich tobacco taste combined in one great cigarette, Lucky Strike. You see, only fine tobacco gives you both perfect mildness and rich taste. And LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And friends, the beautiful new Lucky Strike Christmas carton, specially designed for Lucky Strike by Raymond Loy, make wonderful Christmas gifts. They're so bright and gay, no additional wrapping is necessary. Yes, for the gift that will bring deep down smoking enjoyment to all your friends, give Christmas cartons of Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. From Palm Springs, California, the Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Ross Chester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. gentlemen, this week Jack Benny is in Palm Springs for the sole purpose of fun and relaxation. Every morning he can be seen playing golf at the O'Donnell Golf Course. Yesterday I was two under par. <laughs> Every afternoon he can be seen playing tennis at the Biltmore. My backhand is sensational. And every evening he can be seen playing his violin on steak rides. I murder them with Mexicali Rose. <laughs> And here he is, our tumbling tumbleweed, Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is Jack Benny tumbling, I mean talking. And Don, you should have seen me on that golf course yesterday. On the first hole, I had a terrible slice. But I made a terrific recovery when I sunk a 30-foot putt. A 30-foot putt? Why, Jack, I think that's wonderful. Well, so did I until I found out it was an open manhole. <laughs> I had on bifocal glasses. An know. open manhole? Well, uh, Jack, did you get your ball back? No, but I got Rochester watching for it at El Segundo. <laughs> And you mentioned I play tennis every afternoon. You must have seen me at the Biltmore. Oh, I did, Jack, and I want to congratulate you for finally staying at such a beautiful place. Well, Don, I'm not exactly staying at the Biltmore. You see, I only play tennis there. I, uh, I have a very comfortable room at the El Pocho Motel. <laughs> it's right near... Oh, no, 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 not that joint. Phil, Phil. <laughs> Well, nobody was talking to you. I know, Jackson, but when you mentioned the El Pocho, my hair straightened and I'm a tight curl man. <laughs> well, how can you stay at a crumb joint like that? <laughs> I never heard of the El Pocho, Phil. Where is it? Well, Don, do you know where the desert retreat is? Yeah. Well, the El Pocho is where it retreated from. <laughs> All right. Listen, the El Pocho may not be swanky, but it's comfortable. I'll admit that my room doesn't have electricity or running water. No electricity or running water? Well, Jack, on these chilly nights, do you have heat? No, no, but if I get in bed by 8 o'clock, it's still warm from the fellow who just got out. <laughs> um, that is, I, I think it's a fellow. It's a fellow. Well, Phil, in Palm Springs, you see, cowboy boots can belong to anybody. You know? But I'll, I'll soon 
find out who it is. I left a note in one of the boots. They were so dainty and petite. They must belong. Oh, hello, Jack. Hello, everybody. Oh, hello, Mary. <laughs> All right, Mary, you can sit down now. Phil, let's have a band now. Well, wait a minute, Jackson. You didn't even give Livy a chance to do a routine. She comes in, says hello, and you push her away from the microphone. Phil, I know what I'm doing. Let's have a band number. Jack, you're not pushing Mary for that little mistake that she made on last week's program. Pushing, did you? That's punishing. <laughs> <in> there... <laughs> Nobody reads on this program. <laughs> I certainly am punishing Mary, and Now, I... wait a minute. What did our little Livy do? I'll tell you what she did, Phil. It happened after you left to do your own show. You remember that part last Sunday when I ran my car into a gas station and hit another car while it was up on a grease rack? Yeah. Well, at the very end of the program, Mary was supposed to say to me, Jack, how could you possibly hit a car that was up on a grease rack? That's all she was supposed to say. <laughs> How could you possibly hit a car that was up on a grease rack? Well, what did she say? Phil, if I told you the mistake she made, you wouldn't believe me, so I brought a record along. Fellas, put that record on, the one I gave you last week's show. Now listen to this, Phil. Well, Mary, I think the way I've got the interview is all right. I think people will be interested in the way I found Rochester. Well, I think so, but Jack, how could you have possibly hit his car while I was up in the grass rake? <laughs> That's enough. That's enough. How do you like that? Grass reek. What kind of a word is that? Oh, Jack, anybody can make Mary, a... get away from the microphone. <laughs> but Jack... Don't but Jack me. Just when I'm getting over chiss wee sandwich, you come up with a new one. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Cheer up, Livy. So you made a little mistake. Next week, before we go on the air, I will personally go over the script with you. Please, Phil, I'm in enough trouble. <laughs> yeah, Luke is going to show her how to read. Phil, you can't even write your own name. So what? So what, what do you do when you have to sign a check? The same as you would take a little Novocaine. <laughs> well, that's a snappy retort coming from a man whose eyes stick out like the taillights on a Greyhound bus. <laughs> <laughs> Now, wait a minute, Mexicali Rose. Hold it. What? I don't think that was a very nice thing to say to a man who's tapering off. Tapering? Tapering off? I certainly am tapering off. You just can't stop in midstream. You've got to drag your anchor a bit. You know? Oh, of course, of course. And it wasn't easy. When I got to Palm Springs last Wednesday, I made up my mind that each day I was going to drink a little less. And I stuck to it. As a matter of fact, today is my fifth day. Really? Yep, today I'm down to a fifth. <laughs> And you, you, you used to spill that much. <laughs> I should have known. Phil, why don't... Come in. Oh, it's you, Dennis. Hello. Well, Dennis, are you enjoying yourself? Yeah, it sure is exciting here in Las Vegas. <laughs> Las Vegas? Dennis, you're not... Hold it, Don, hold it. <laughs> Dennis, you're... You're in Las Vegas? Yeah. Well, say, Mr. Benny, would you give me a dollar's worth of nickels? What do you want nickels for? Well, I've been playing those slot machines, and one of them is bound to pay off soon. What slot machines? They're all over the place. They're lined up on both sides of the street. <laughs> those are parking meters! <laughs> Slot machines. Gee, and I thought the fella playing the one next to me won a Cadillac. <laughs> what? With a girl in it yet. <laughs> Mary, Mary, you talk to him. I don't have to. Fortunately, you threw me off the program. <laughs> oh, yes. Now go over in the corner and say grease rack 50 times. Then you can come back. Oh, all right. Grass reek. Say, Dennis, where are you staying down here? Oh, I'm at the El Pocho Motel. The El Pocho? Dennis, that's where I'm staying. What room are you in? 24. 24? 
I'm in that room, too. Oh, so you're blue eyes. <laughs> Gee, that was a cute note you left in my cowboy boot. Hmm. Hey, Jackson told us about that. Read us that note, kid. Dennis. Oh, come on now, Dennis. Read the note Jack wrote. Okay. You and I have never met. To me, you are a stranger. But I'm carefree of the desert breeze and would like a little danger. <laughs> For him, I called in a writer. <laughs> All right, Dennis, come on. Let's have your song. Okay. You? Hold it a minute. Come in. Well, kids, look who it is. It's Mr. Mr. Tavoni. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Savoni, what are you doing down here in Palm Springs? I just came down to relax. <laughs> Relax? I didn't think you had a care in the world. Neither did I. I was enjoying life. Just sitting around the house. I wasn't doing anything. Just sitting around the house. I didn't feel like doing anything. Just sitting around the house. After a while, it made me so nervous. <laughs> Nervous, eh? So I went to see my doctor. Oh, so the doctor sent you to Palm Springs to rest? Yeah. <laughs> he said, John, most people can't take too much of the desert, but you, you can stay out in the hot sun as long as you want. It won't even hurt you a bit. <laughs> Savoni, I didn't think, I didn't think you had enough money to come to Palm Springs. But here you are, you even have a new suit on. Where are you living? At Bullock's. <laughs> Bullock's? That, that's a department store. I don't care what it is. They're very proud of me. Proud of you at Bullock's? Yeah. <laughs> I was just standing around. The doctor told me to relax so I wasn't even moving a muscle. Uh-huh. All of a sudden, a guy come over, put this suit on me, picked me up, put my hand on my hip, and stuck me in a window. <laughs> in the window? So I, I gotta go now, Mr. Benny. I'm getting married this afternoon. No. Yeah! <laughs> While I was standing there all dressed up in this new suit, I proposed to a girl standing next to me in the window! <laughs> Mr. Savoni, that's impossible. No, it ain't. Don't tell me she said yes. She didn't say no. <laughs> well, goodbye. Ah! Goodbye, Mr. Savoni, and good luck. Goodbye. <laughs> Let's have your song. Yeah. <laughs> the holly green, the ivy green, the prettiest picture you've ever seen is Christmas in Killarney with all of the folks at home. It's nice to know to kiss your bow while cuddling under the mistletoe. And Santa Claus, you know, of course, is one of the boys from home. The door is always open. The neighbors pay a call. And Father John, before he's gone, will bless the house and all. How grand it feels to click your heels and join in the fun of the jigs and reels. I'm handing you no blarney, the likes you've never known. It's Christmas in Killarney with all of the folks at home. The holly green, the ivy green, the prettiest picture you've ever seen. It's Christmas in Killarney with all of the folks at home. There was cousin no flower. 
Flaherty, Uncle O'Shaughnessy, Michael, me brother, and Auntie McGee. And father and mither were all in a dither when Terence the baby crawled under the tree. It's nice, you know, to kiss your foe while cuddling under the mistletoe. When Santa Claus, you know, of course, is one of the boys from home. Twas Paddy de la Hanty who dressed up like Santa and gave out the presents like he always does. But Johnny McGee, when he sat on his knee, tried to pull off his whiskers to say who it was. The door is always open, the neighbors pay a call. And Father John, before he's gone, will bless the house at all. A brand new wheels to flick your heels and join in the fun of the jigs and reels. I'm handing you no blarney, the likes you'll never know. sung by Dennis Day. Very good, Dennis. Your voice was wonderful. When you wrote that poem, I'll bet you thought it was much higher. <laughs> oh, forget it. Jack. What? I said grease rack 50 times. Can I come back on the program now? Yeah, but you sure you, you sure you didn't say grass reed? Not even once. Good, good. Sure I'm not angry. I'll take you to dinner at the dunes. And tomorrow morning, I'll take you on a breakfast ride. Oh, fine. Remember that last breakfast ride? <laughs> <laughs> what was it, Barry? Somebody dropped an egg. Jack saw the yolk, thought it was gold, and before we could stop him, he dug a hole 30 feet deep. <laughs> 30 feet deep, 30 feet deep. That joke you had to read right. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction tonight, we are going to present our brand new 1950 version of Murder at the Racket Club. <laughs> Once again, I will play the part of Captain O'Betty. And Mary, you will... Oh, for heaven's sake. Come in. Yes? Mr. Benny, I'm Gus Ketman, the Palm Springs Chief of Police. <laughs> oh, well, what do you want to see me about, Chief Ketman? It's about those sketches you do here in Palm Springs. You mean murder at the racket club? Yes. Why must these murders always take place at the racket club? Well, we get a better class of bodies that way. <laughs> But you don't object to our doing these plays, do you? No, but it might leave the wrong impression. There's probably never been a murder at the racket club. Probably? You mean you're the chief of police and you don't know? They won't let me in there. <laughs> no. I wish you'd mention my name to the owner, Charlie Farrell, the star of Seventh Heaven. <laughs> I will, I will. But why do you object to my doing murder mysteries? Don't you ever have murders here? Very rarely. We only have minor troubles, like this morning. We had to chase a skunk that was running around on someone's lawn. Oh, did you finally get the skunk off the lawn? Yes, but boy, did that grass reek. It. We're going to do our sketch, and don't worry, Chief, I won't embarrass you. But how can you be a police officer? You don't even know how to handle a gun. What's so difficult about handling a gun? There's a lot to it. Here, I'll show you. Oh, wait, Chief, Chief, don't point that gun at me. It might go off. Don't worry. It's loaded with dates. <laughs> Your gun is loaded with dates? Whenever I get hungry, I play Russian roulette. Oh, and you sit down and listen while we do the sketch, and I promise I won't embarrass you. Okay. Now, come on, let's get on with the play. <laughs> Hit it, Sam! <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, we present our 1950 version of Murder at the Racket Club, or get a load of those prices. <laughs> <laughs> the scene opens in the office of Captain O'Benny of the Palm Springs Police Force. Curtain. Music. Hello, Palm Springs Police Station, Captain O'Benny talking. What's that? What? A dice game? Well, I'll take care of that. All right, men, put away those dice. Now, come on, line up for inspection. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, Wilson, a fine policeman you make with that bay window. 
Pull in your stomach. Pull in a little more. More. That's better. <laughs> now, men, today we must... Pull it in again, Wilson. <laughs> Now, man, we've got to have a more efficient police force. Do you realize that in the past few years, Palm Springs has been the most popular resort in the entire country? And do you know why it's so popular? No television. <laughs> Besides that, it's popular because the town has run so well. I know that, Captain, and I'm doing my best to keep it clean. Why, only yesterday I closed up a nightclub that had a naughty floor show. They featured a girl dancer doing the bumps. The bumps? And what did you say to her? I said, get out of here with that. And don't come back no more. Well done, O'Hara. Now, men. I'll get it. Hello, Palm Springs Police Station. Hello? Hello? Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. Testing, testing. Don't worry about the mistakes now. <laughs> what do you want? Well, listen, Chiefy, this is Missy LaRue, and I'd like to report a murder. A murder? Who was killed? Uh, Townsend T. Fletcher. Ah, <laughs> uh, the rich Andy Devine. It happened by the pool at 3 o'clock this afternoon. 3 o'clock this afternoon, eh? Was the murder man shot? Uh-uh. Poisoned? Uh-uh. Strangled? Uh-uh. Then how did he die? The sun went down and he froze to death. <laughs> Wait a minute, that isn't murder. It isn't? No. Are you happy now? <laughs> yes, I'll be right over, and I want to talk to you, so you wait there. I can't. Why not? Because last night, one of your cops said something to me. What did he say? Get out of here with that... And don't come back no more. <laughs> Never mind that. You wait there. Now I really want to see you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Come on, men. We got to rush over to the racket club. And I'll solve this murder... Or my name ain't... Captain Benny's on his way to solve this murder case. He's a rootin', tootin', shootin' guy with a holster trimmed with lace. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. oodle poop poo poo pee poo Okay, man, here we are at the racket club. Now, where's the body? Here I am, Chiefy. I mean the dead one. <laughs> Gee, it was here a minute ago. It must have disappeared during the excitement. What excitement? A few minutes ago, a skunk ran across the lawn into that grease rack. <laughs> that grass reed. Well, make up your mind. <laughs> we'll go inside and look for the body. Come on, men. Well, just a second, Captain O'Benny. I'm playing ping pong. Oh, boy, that's another point for me. Oh, Dave, who are you playing with? Nobody. This wind is terrific. <laughs> Stop it and come inside with me. And I'll solve this murder, or my name ain't... Captain Benny's at the club to solve this mystery. And if he can't, he'll lose his job with LSMFT. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Little do we know, I mean, little do we know <laughs> that the murder might still be here. Oh, Wilson, you take the hallway. Oh, Day, you look through the kitchen. Oh, Harris, you come in the bar with me. Yes, sir. <laughs> Wait a minute, here comes someone. Can I help you, gentlemen? Yes, I'm Captain O'Benny, Chief of Police. Who are you? Oh, I'm the lifeguard here at the racket club. Oh, well, if you were the lifeguard, you must have been at the pool when the murder took place. Well, not necessarily. They have 26 lifeguards here. But you only have one pool. How come you have so many lifeguards? Well, Mr. Farrell, don't let nobody drown till they pay their bill. <laughs> oh. That would be taken the easy way out. Some smart answer. Now get out of here with that... Missy, cut that out. <laughs> now come on, Harris. I'm going to look for the owner of this place. And I'll solve this murder or my name ain't... Captain Benny is our chief and he is acting tough. But when he smokes his lucky strike, you'll find no puff that's rough. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky strike today. Oodly 
proof? Hmm. Here. Here, this looks like the office. Yeah, look at that sign on the door, Chief. Office of Charlie Farrell, mayor of Palm Springs, star of 7th Heaven, owner of the Racket Club, and inventor of the $95 Blue Plate Special. <laughs> P.S. No dessert. You wait out here, O'Hara. I'll interview this Farrell fellow. Come in. Well, it's about time. <laughs> Uh, yes, I am. Well, all right, Farrell. <laughs> all right, Farrell, now listen to me. There was a murder committed in the club. Now, what have you got to say? Oodly poo poo poo. Never poo, mind. Poo. <laughs> what were you doing at the time of the murder? I was in Hollywood all day doing retakes on Seventh Heaven. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Seventh Heaven was made nearly 20 years ago. How come you're still doing retakes? I've got a lousy agent. <laughs> well, now, listen, Farrell, I want this straight. What do you know about the murder? Well, I didn't do it, I tell you. I couldn't have done it. I wouldn't have done it even if I could. I'm not the type to commit murder. I'm not a murderer, I tell you. I'm not, I'm not. Believe me, I tell you, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I didn't really, I didn't, honest. Honest, I didn't Control do it. yourself. <laughs> I didn't say you did it. I know, but I love to act. <laughs> well, Farrell, I'm going to have to take you to the police department for questioning. Oh, I wish you wouldn't. If I were arrested, it would be the most embarrassing thing that ever happened to me in all my 39 years. <laughs> 39? How can you say you're 39? Look at your hair. It's gray. I know, but it's mine. <laughs> oh, yeah? Let me see the sales slip. Now, come on, Farrell. Let's go. Uh, wait a minute. Here comes someone who looks suspicious. Where? Oh, yes. Hey, what are you doing? I have to spend an hour with you. As friend of friend, I'm sorry it's true. I'm telling you. Wait a minute. Just wait a minute. Eddie Tander, what's the matter with you? You got no business barging in here and ruining my sketch. Well, that's the most insulting thing that's ever been said to me in all my 39 years. <laughs> You're 39? Yeah, and so are Ida and my five kids. <laughs> even when I started it, I didn't even think it would catch on like this. Play, Phil. <laughs> Jack, we'll be back in just a moment. But first, everybody, be happy, go lucky, and let's join in a gay costume party. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike me happy. Costume made a hit, my cigarette did too. For it is milder, lucky strike, the happy smoke for you. A senorita with the fan is smart, you will agree. But even smarter when she lights an LSMFT. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike me happy, go lucky, go lucky strike today. Yes, friends, light up a lucky and enjoy perfect mildness and rich taste combined in one great cigarette, Lucky Strike. With every puff, you'll always enjoy perfect mildness. In fact, scientific tests confirmed by three independent consulting laboratories prove Lucky Strike is milder than any other principal brand. And puff after puff, you'll enjoy the full rich taste of truly fine tobacco because LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And remember, Lucky Strike Christmas cartons, specially designed by the famous Raymond Loy, are a perfect way to say Merry Christmas. Put Lucky Strike Christmas cartons on your shopping list today. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Well, Chief Kepman, how'd you like our little sketch? It was quite good, Jack. And on behalf of the Palm Springs Police Force, I'd like to present you with this. Well. Oh, Jack, what is it? A ticket. I was double parked. <laughs> well, Eddie Cantor, I want to thank you for dropping in on my program. That's all right, Jack. I was glad to do it. Was there anything you'd like to say before we leave? Yes. Good night, Ida. Good night, Marilyn. Good night, Janet. Good night, Natalie. Good night, Edna. Good night, Marjorie. Good night, Jerome. Good night, Jerome. I never give up. Oh. <laughs> The part of John L. C. Simone was played by Frankie Fontaine. Stay tuned for the Amos and Andy show which follows immediately. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. 
You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com.